So let's talk about I2C communication. Okay, so this I2C communication is most important for us. So whenever you are looking to implement some I2C communication, first of all, you people have to know about the bus architectures and which bus you are going to use generally. Whenever you are looking to perform UART protocol communication with the families, then our people are depending on the buses, which is RS232, RS485. So because channel is also very most important for I2C communications. Okay. And before going to classification of buses systems, then the serial communication buses systems which are classified into two ways. One is interbus communication system. and intrabus communication system okay so how you people will differentiate this interbus communication system and intrabus communication system so interbus communication system means the two devices so which are com which are going to communicate in two different systems suppose this is one system and this is your second system now whenever you want to establish the communication between these two devices then so this bus which is treated as interbus communication system okay so whenever our people are going to establish the communication between two different devices which are present in two different systems okay then that communication system which is treated as interbus communication system and how to define your intrabus communication system the two devices which are present in same system so which are present in one system then this bus system which is treated as intra okay so whenever you people are going to communicate two different devices which are present in two different systems which is treated as interbus communication system and whenever the two devices which are present in same system so whenever you want to communicate the bus which is treated as intrabus communication system okay so this is this is the two important differences with your intrabus communication system and intrabus communication system okay now so for which kind of communication which protocols will support in the real time like so now already our people use and our people establishes the communication with your microcontroller and uh, module microcontroller with PC because these two are two different systems then uh, you can consider this intra system or inter bus communication system so for intra you people can use the protocols like I2C SPI and whereas your inter bus communication you people can use UART and USB. See, for I2C means this I2C communication protocol which is help us to communicate two devices which are present in same system like uh, 8051 controller and the EEPROM chip uh, or 8051 controller with some other port expander or 8051 controller with RTC chip. So because the two devices which are existence in one system, right? So then there you people can use these two protocols and whenever you want to communicate two different devices which are in two different systems like uh, mobile and PC or mobile and your laptop. So because these two are two different systems whenever you want to communicate those two things then which cable our people will use or which bus our people will use USB bus right. So these are the two differences with respect to intra and inter. Now, so this UART which is help us to communicate two different systems with your two different devices and the intra system, intra bus which is help us to communicate two devices which are existence in one system, okay. So for this way, our people can prefer this I2C protocol and for this way, you people can prefer your UART protocol, okay. So that is the reason all this serial communication knowledge is most important for us. So whenever you are looking to communicate the electronic devices okay so now let's most concentrate on i2c protocol and how this i2c communication you people can establish between devices 
and what is the terminology behind this and what is the buses and what is the baud rate and all this information we are going to talk so how this i2c communication you can establish between two electronic devices like so whenever you want if whenever whenever you are looking to implement one kind of protocol every protocol has its own terminology so generally how can you define your protocol which is some set of rules and regulations right so the same way your i2c communication protocol also have the some rules and regulations and with different terminology so now here in previous case our people are talking the devices as a transmitter and receiver right so how can you define your transmitter so which will send the information to bus and what about receiver so the device which will receive the information from bus right the same way here the i2c communication protocol which will have the different terminology like a master and slave so here the devices which are called as master and slave why because here the devices which are present in same single system okay so now whenever you are looking to establish the communication with your device so i want to call as a master and the other side device which is slave then when which is treated as a master and when which is which is treated as a slave so now i am coming i am connecting the bus which is called as i2c bus okay then so what is how can you define your master here and how can you define slave and how can you define your i2c bus now coming to the master the master has the three responsibilities here one is it has to initiate the communication like whatever the device which is initiating your communication then which is treated as a master and the other responsibility for your master is it has to generate the clock and one more responsibility for the master is it has to which has to terminate the communication so these are the three major responsibilities for your device so these are the three responsibilities as a master so in i2c communication the master has these these three responsibilities compulsory and how can you define your slave so the slave which will follows the master so these the way you people can define your master and slave devices master which has the three responsibilities it has to initiate the communication and generates the clock and terminates the communication and slave means which has to follow the master and how can you define your i2c bus here so here i2c bus means the two physical lines i am using to connect master and slave what are the two physical lines here sda and scl so what is sda here serial data line and what is scl serial clock line so these are the two physical lines you people have to use whenever you want to communicate master and slave okay so the serial data line one physical line you need and serial clock line the serial data line the characteristics of serial data line which is a bidirectional bidirectional means so this line which will sends the data from master to slave and which will receives the data from slave to master okay so because the only one line here for sharing the data between master and slave okay so suppose you are allowing transmit the data from master to slave through sda line only you have to send whenever you want to receive the data from slave to master through sda line only you have to take the data and what about scl here so this will handle this clock so this clock it should be in a synchronization so always the clocks which are passing from master to slave through this scl line so that means in this i2c bus there is a two lines here sda and scl so one line for data sharing between master and slave and what about this scl so which is help us to generate the whatever the generated clocks from master so which will keeps in synchronization of your slave okay so this is your simple master and slave suppose you are looking to communicate multiple slaves so i want to communicate uh, or i want to connect multiple devices with one i2c bus then uh, you people can connect with the help of this slave address so because 
the one I2C bus which will connect multiple slaves also. Then when it will it is possible to connect multiple slaves with one master with the help of this unique slave address. So unique slave address means so every I2C device has its own unique address. And who will give this unique address for us, which is generated by or which will be provided by the manufacturer? Because user cannot create any unique address for this I2C devices. So this you have to approach for the manuals of manufacturer and which I2C device you are going to work. So then check out your slave address of this I2C device. So which will given by the manufacturer and the size of this slave address is 7 bit or 10 bit. Okay, so this is the most important thing in our I2C communication which will follow one slave address and this slave address which is 7 bit or 10 bit. And one more thing, suppose whenever one multiple master sir wants to communicate one I2C bus that should be your arbitration. Generally arbitration means so without losing the content of original data in the I2C bus so even the multi masters concepts also you can applicable here. But so don't corrupt this existence data in the bus. So that should be your arbitration. Okay. So even arbitration happens with your I2C communication. Whenever the multiple devices wants to use one I2C bus, so because it should be in a parallel form and don't corrupt the original data, whatever whatever sharing between uh, devices. Okay. So that should be your arbitration. So this is the simple terminology. So you people have to know about I2C communication and as well as I2C baud rate. So I2C supports different speeds here. So which is which will supports general I2C mode and fast I2C mode. So general I2C mode which will supports up to 100 kbps and the fast I2C mode which is 4 mbps. Okay. So this is the first so which will sub, which will work in two speeds one is 100 kbps and 4 mbps okay so this is the general brief information about i2c communication and how the i2c communication happens with this multiple slaves with one master slave 1 and slave 2 you are looking to connect multiple slaves you people can connect then how many slaves you can connect with this one master so you people can connect up to 127 why because so there is a 7 bit addressing for your devices right so 7 bit means so how many different addresses you people can get the possibilities up to 2 power 17 so that means 128 okay so these 128 devices you people can connect with uh, one I2C bus but generally people will follow this uh, 7 bit addressing because there is a choice for us either you can choose 7 bit addressing or 10 bit but most of the manufacturers follow 7 bit addressing for all I2C devices okay so this is the I2C communication protocol introduction and its terminology and what way so you people can establish communication with master to slave or slave to master and one more thing here so you people have to so go know about the acknowledgement so what is meant by acknowledgement here so whenever the data which is shared between master to slave or slave to master for every 8 bits of data transmission you people are going to get the acknowledgement from slave to master or master to slave okay so this is a one bit acknowledgement you people will get between master to slave or slave to master this is a response or it is a signal which is generated by slave to master or master suppose the data is sending from master to slave slave has to give acknowledgement to master suppose this master is taking data from slave then master has to generate this acknowledgement okay so this is the way for every 8 bits of transmission data transmission or reception the devices share each other their acknowledgement okay and the one more thing like uh, so this is about all the information about the i2c communication and its protocol and the rules and regulations and whenever you are looking to generate the i2c communication between devices so these are the most important points okay thank you